So hello everyone. Hi. Um, it's me Megan from Everloved Reborns and I am doing a painting tutorial for you today. Um, this is for hair painting because I had quite a few requests from people asking me how I do my hair painting. So um, I have been meaning to do a tutorial for quite a long time. Now I've got here, this is the brush that I use that really I can paint the whole head with just one brush. And that's this one, it's nothing special. This is from uh, Bold Mirror and it's a number eight brush. So if you did wanna buy the same one, but any round tip brush, this doesn't look very um, together right now because I just use it so much, but that's kind of what you want. So you wanna buy a round tip brush, um, but the aim is to fan the bristles out as you use it. I haven't, I haven't uh, modified this brush at all. I haven't done anything to it or cut into it or anything. So now the first thing that I've done with this baby and what I like to do with all of my babies. This one I'm custom hair painting. And this baby's by um, Here Now Forever Babies by Rosalie, uh, by Rosalind, sorry. <laughs> that was confusing. Um, this is the Rosalie kit. So I am gonna paint some hair on for her. But when I, whenever I receive a head from another artist, because of which paints they use to put on the head and maybe they've varnished it already or whatever. I use my own varnish. Varnish the head first before I start the hair painting and this is the varnish I use, which is such an amazing matte varnish. I can't recommend this enough. You have got to get some. Um, and that's what I finish all my babies with and it gives them such a soft um, skin and such a soft finish, but it's completely matte. So I've already varnished this, ready to paint the hair. Um, I'm not saying that this is like the absolute right way to do everything. I'm just showing you what I do. Now I do put a little bit of distilled water onto the palette first. Um, and then I take, I've got some raw umber acrylic paint and I've got some black acrylic paint as well. What I'm going to do to start with is I've just mixed a little bit of paint so it's really thin on here. Um, and I'm going to try and see how this looks on the head. So I don't tend to map out my routing or my hair painting anymore because I'm just so used to doing it. But I'll show you what I do because it's quite simple. Um, I call it the 6-9 swirl. And what you want is for this swirl to go like a number 6, like so. And then you want a 9 to sort of grow from the middle of there and come around this way. And then... You can see that's that's your crown already made. So simple. Now I'm going to use this brush, and like I said, I like to sort of plonk it down on the uh, palette there to get the bristles to fan out like this, and that's what's going to give you the hair strokes. And you'll see how quick and easy this is to actually do. Um, you can see it's creating this sort of hair effect, but this is only the first layer. We're going to sort of pop that on the whole head. Um, in this raw umber colour and we're going to get darker as we get, go and do the other layers on top so uh, so I'm just going to quickly carry on with this and then I'll be right back If you do find that the paint is a little watery, it won't create the hair stroke so much. So then you just get a little bit more paint, make it a little bit thicker. And don't forget, if you make a mistake or if you feel like it's not going well, you can always just wipe it off. I mean, these are all air dry acrylics that I'm using. I'm not going to use any heat set paints, but you can paint on top of heat set um, skin, you know, with, with air dry paints. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. So just... I've thickened up the paint a little more so that you can see those hair strokes a bit better and it doesn't matter if it doesn't look perfect at this at this point because you're going to cover it up with lots more layers so don't worry too much about you know even if there's one bit that you think oh that's a bit heavy or whatever it's it's going to be all right um I do have quite a laid back attitude to all of this to be honest and it helps because I always think where there's a will there's a way and most mistakes you can fix okay and then i'm just going to bring and then following that six 
you're just going to come always start from the middle and just drag your brush along but I will say you have to have the lightest pressure I mean you barely want to be touching the vinyl to be honest with this brush and because the bristles are all fanned out it's going to do a lot of the work for you in terms of creating those hairs a lot of people think you have to use a really fine brush for hair painting I think that's the biggest mistake you could make um, I mean I think there is a call for it if you're doing a very very small reborn um, then that might help but generally this is going to create a much more realistic effect anyway because you've got the hairs on the brush and so they're simply swiping across the vinyl and doing the work for you um, I've almost covered the head now some bits are a little bit darker than others but that's fine and that's natural as well when you look at a baby's head that's that is how it tends to be so I'm bringing this down a little bit here into the center and as you can see I keep reloading my brush and just popping so that the bristles fan out um, come in and then I'm just going to sort of make sure this front bit is quite delicate I like to put a few wispy hairs on, on sort of the temple area there and we're going to add more detail in a second with uh, darker paint all right so um, you can see now how that's coming together okay guys so I, ha I have just put um, some black paint here and I don't want to use too much of it I'm only going to pick up a teeny bit you can see just on the bristles of the brush there there's a little bit of black okay and I'm going to just mix that in um, we need to get the consistency right so just play around with it I mean this will all just be trial and error I recommend if you are quite new to hair painting that you use a blank head that you can just strip um, and just keep practicing on the same head uh, or even just a section of the head so now I'm going back to the crown and you can see here um, the shape we've got so always come from the crown when you're doing these darker layers you always want to be starting from here it will just look a lot more natural so I'm just bringing that from this crown around okay so that's my first darker layer this is layer two now and I'm just gonna sweep always from the crown there yeah so a little bit more pressure at the crown and then just lift it like lift it away okay so I'll just try and show you <laughs> So you can see it's, and this is what I mean about um, when the paint's too runny, but it's fine. Just try and dry off your brush and drag it through again and it will pick up that excess paint. Picked up that excess paint and now it's nice and smooth. Um, at a midway point through any creative process, I think it always looks really strange. Like if you're doing your makeup and you've just got a full face of foundation. <laughs> and you look really strange and pale but then but by the end you know you've got layers to everything and I think every creative process has layers so this is just we're not even halfway through this yet but you can see that there is a process and so it will look strange but don't give up and don't just think oh that's just not looking right because it's not meant to look right until the end I'm not happy with this it looks a bit too dark there so I'm just going to swipe up with my thumb and my hand just get rid and then come back down. I think I went a little bit too heavy there. I'm trying to uh, move my head to the camera to make sure it's in shot. <laughs> a couple of times in the past I've tried to record a video and um, when I've watched it back the head's like over here out of shot. You can just see a little face. It's so pointless. So I keep craning my neck to make sure I can get all this on camera for you. It's not the best quality probably but um, I think it's, you know, you can see what I mean, what I'm talking about most of the time. So we just really follow that shape. 
and it's not until the last layers that I'm going to sort of deviate from that shape a little bit just to get a little bit more realism and movement in the hair and so I will add details at the end with like a few wispy hairs that are going in other directions and stuff so you can see here I love Rosalind's babies they're so sweet I do a lot of hair on her babies, which is a real honour. In fact, I just love some of the artists that I know in this community. And some of the customers have become really good friends of mine now. Right, so you can see this little hair hairline starting to take shape. And I'm really not that fussy with my paint. Like, as you can see, I just get different amounts of the black and the brown and just keep mixing it until it sort of looks right to me. Um, just try not to worry about it too much because the other thing is hair is naturally different shades so you want some of it to look um, darker than others just not too much all right so we're getting those I sort of do a backward motion here into the ear so just like that because I think it looks more natural there and then I come forward from this from this nine swirl that I've done the nine comes around to this side so as you can see the six is going up over and there and then you'll just follow that shape of the nine the top of the nine you'll follow it around to go around that side of the head I hope this is making sense to everyone it makes sense to me anyway in my brain um, <laughs> So I'm just carrying on with that same flow. And all the time I'm just dipping a bit more distilled water. That's all I've got in that bottle. I've reused the bottles. Um, originally I started painting with Special Care Nursery Paints. Um, and as you can see, I've mixed so many different colors into these bottles now uh, myself, because I just find it easier to get exactly what I want. So as you can see, I'm just sweeping around, following that same swirl around, and then we're going to um, add more depth and detail as we go on. But by repeating these brush strokes with, this, with these bristles, it is like we're just building up more and more hairs on the head. And that's why a lot of people, when they see my hair painting, they think it's rooted because you're really getting that 3D effect, especially because we started with lighter layers. And then we get a little bit thicker and a little bit darker in places, and that's really gonna help to achieve that. Now, just be careful of the ears. Sometimes I'll pop a bit of masking tape over the ear or a little cotton pad, but um, you can just pull that off. I've done that second layer now. And as you can see, like some bits for example, this bit here is like a little bit darker. You can just blend it out, just blend it over. So you can see it's starting to build up and it's starting to sort of soften a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna let this fully dry and then I'll continue with the third. Okay, hello, I've just dried this head. I do sometimes just get a little heater or um, a hairdryer to dry it makes life easier. So next I'm going to be using more black and a little bit less of the umber colour just to darken it a little bit and make sure it's a good consistency. So we want it just a little bit thicker than the other layers have been because this is just to add more detail. When we're adding this last layer I really want you to go so carefully like so gently not only is the paint darker this time and thicker but but you just want to be really selective with where you place these layers okay because it's going to really this is where it's going to look so real um and this is when we don't want to necessarily follow the exact pattern that we followed so far so as you can see we've done the six and we've done the nine coming down and we've just followed it all across the head. This is when you want to kind of be a bit more free with where you put the paint. So um, start off wherever you like, wherever your heart takes you really. Um, 
I do, like I said, I like the crown to just be a little bit darker because it makes sense. The hair sort of comes from there and spreads. You know, it falls naturally from there, doesn't it? So some people might prefer to use a thinner brush for some details as well. So I will show you in a second. I do have some really fine brushes and they're awesome for this, but I very rarely use them. I just tend to use this one big brush, but until you've got the hang of it, it might seem trickier to get details with a fat brush. So you might just want to use a fine one anyway. And then I'm going to turn the head. Just keep turning your work because it will help you to see um, how it's going to flow. So from this crown, I'm just going to keep. Don't worry too much about this, um, the skin here, because we're going to tighten that up at the end with a smaller brush. But for now, just kind of generally come from there and let it flow. And I mean, even if I couldn't find this brush, I'd just use a similar one. So it hasn't got to be this exact brush. If you've got a similar brush to this lying around, just basically it needs to be quite feathery and it's important that it's a rounded tip so that it's the hairs are longer in the middle and shorter on the outsides. So I'm just going to see, hopefully this one will, this consistency is all right. Yeah, that's perfect. We just want to bring it round. Can you see that? I hope this is focusing all right. And then, and then here, I'm just gonna sort of fan the hairs like that. See that? And let's do some more here, because I want this to kind of meet in there, in the middle. This is the most exciting bit, because it stops looking like paint and it starts looking like hair. And I'm just, because I'm right-handed, it's gonna be awkward for me to come over here, so I'm gonna turn the head like this. And then I'm going to bring it down and out like that. And this is where you want the hairs to kind of do their own thing across, you know, across the layers we've already put there, if you know what I mean. Then it really does give the impression of hair because it's, it's sort of flowing and it's got a bit of movement. Keep your pressure so, so light for this. I can't stress that enough. It's really hard because, I mean, I suffer so much with pain in my shoulders and my neck because of the tension you have to have to get the pressure right. And um, especially with rooting, it absolutely kills me. But just keep your pressure really light. So you've almost got that, that tightness in your shoulder from, from holding your arm back. It's honestly the lightest feathery touch possible. And just, you'll find it will work if you do that. I think the biggest thing with hair painting is getting the pressure right. Um, but she's starting to look cute. I think I'm just, I want her to just look a little bit more girly. So I'm going to get rid of some of this paint on the palette. As you can see, I'm just, I'm just blotting it off to get rid of the excess. Get off the excess. I just want this to be softer here at the front for her because I always think that adds a little bit of a feminine look if it's just sweeping at the front. Do you see what I mean? Um, I always leave a little bit of a gap here so it's sort of like a receding hairline like babies have. <laughs> little old man hair. Um, So you bring it forward, but just not as far forward as the rest. And then we come in on the sides here. Worth it, because once you get into your own flow of things, it just becomes so easy. And, you know, you've worked hard to hone that skill. And I just thought it was a good idea to sort of offer that to other artists, because I know a lot of people get frustrated that they can't paint hair. And they might paint something so beautifully and then they can totally ruin it when they try and do the hair that used to be me I used to be so unhappy with like if I put hair on and it just ruined the realism of the doll because I was much better at painting um, the skin than I was the hair at first but it just takes practice that's all 
and I'm bringing so I can finish this bit in a little while because I don't want to make the video too long so what I'll show you now is I do have these they're like Chinese writing brushes that I just ordered on eBay I think um, and these are good as well if you did want a finer tip for the details um, you can always use something like this so the top of the head again you just want such a light pressure you don't really want you don't want to press too hard here at all the last thing you want is for the brush to like press on the head so you just want to use the very very tip I hope you can see this it's so light it's just hovering over the head and you can do this once you get the precision with the bigger brush you can just do it with a bigger brush um, and it's all about getting the consistency of the paint right as well if you use a bigger brush now can you see that again it's just adding another dimension to the hair and it really brings it to life so um, I do I do like to add these really fine details on top um, and just where the hair if you can see like this line here if you, you what you want is to just make it look like the hairs are gathering here at the end like this you see that and I'm going to do a similar thing here but again don't bring it so far forward I'm just going to make those gathered bits settle a little further back on the head like that and then you're just going to complete the rest of the head by doing that I think what I might do now is I'll, I'll just go ahead and finish that and then I'll add some pictures of the finished baby I'll just try and focus yep you can see there now so once I've finished this in a few minutes or maybe it might take 20 minutes I'm not sure I'll see how much detail I want to add and then I'll take some photos for you guys to see and I'll pop them at the end of the video so thank you so much for watching um, my page is ever loved reborns so if you do want to follow I will be trying to make some more um, tutorials and things like that in the coming weeks because I know that people find them helpful and I mean I used to watch a lot when I was learning to reborn as well but mostly I'd say it's trial and error and just keep practicing um anyway thanks for watching and um and i'll see you guys soon take care so here's the finished head guys i hope you like the results um honestly once you get the hang of it it takes it hasn't even taken an hour to paint that so um i'd love to see what you guys create and please follow my page and I'll follow yours if you let me know your nursery page I'd love to keep on um, keep in touch and keep on helping you guys any way I can um, thank you very much for watching